emails are the same as the voicemail. So voicemail one, email one are the same. Voicemail two, email two are the same. Voicemail three, email three are the same. So each of those voicemail email combinations are different. And the way they are different is if you have one value proposition, then tell different stories. For example, this client, her value proposition was helping nonprofit agencies make money on their events. So every single voicemail, she gave a different example. We just worked with XYZ agency and their event made however much money it made. So she would give a difference. She had the same value proposition in every single voicemail email combination, but she gave a different example. And if you've got three different uh, value propositions, use each one and tell a story that supports it in each of the voicemail email combinations. And so that brings us to number four, which is the move on message. So you've just reached out to this prospect essentially six times over a period of about three weeks. Voicemail number four and email number four, if you've not heard back, I call it the move on message. The move on message goes like this. I've tried to reach you a number of times to discuss, fill in the blank with whatever it is you want to talk about. I haven't heard back from you. I know you're really busy, so I'm assuming this isn't a good time for us to have this conversation. And I don't want to be a pest, so I'm going to cease and desist. I will reach back out to you and name a time frame. It could be three months. It could be six months. It could be a year. That's really contingent on how many leads you have and also if your offering has a uh, expiration date. If, it, if there's, for example, I work with a lot of people in commercial real estate, if they're calling on lease expirations, they need to do it sooner and they can't wait till after the lease has expired and somebody has renewed. So those are the considerations. Um, but you name a time frame, and then you say, if you've been meaning to get back to me and just haven't had the chance, I'd welcome the opportunity to discuss, fill in the blank with whatever it is you want to talk about. This is the most returned message. Uh, this is, you'll probably get responses, one, two, and three, but number four is when they call you back or respond to the email. And lots of times they apologize. <laughs> and there's a reason. I mean, let's think about this. Whatever, whatever your offering is, whatever it is you sell, there are people that are in the market for it today. They need it. There are also probably people, maybe they're not in the market today, but they know at some point in the future they're going to have a need. Because you have left some really good messages previously, you do need to do that. When you say, I don't want to make a pest of myself, so I'm not going to keep reaching out to you, the people that need help today or the people that know they will need help in the future, they will respond. The reason is you've been on their list. You left some good messages, they're like, oh, okay, well, this is something I need. I should call this person back. But here's the thing. They think you are a salesperson. That's what they think. And they think you are going to keep calling them. The problem is what most people do is they call once or twice, and then they stop. And your prospect doesn't call you because they think you're going to call them. So when you signal, when you say, I don't want to be a pest, so I'm going to cease and desist, the ones that want to talk to you will respond. And that's when we see the biggest response. And lots of times they do apologize. Oh, Liam, I'm so sorry. I've just been so busy. <laughs> so, um, and then if you don't hear from that prospect, but you still think that's a good lead for you, just recycle them. Try them again in three months or six months or a year. Because things change. <laughs>